campus um, as quickly as possible. There's a large group with us today, and so we expect a number of questions, but we'll try to get through and, and answer everyone's. Uh, this uh, also one thing to mention: this uh, webinar will be recorded, and so if um, you want to use this uh, for reference afterwards, um, we'll have make a recording available and post that on the web uh, early next week, and we'll send out an email to all attendees with that link to the recording. Uh, as we begin, uh, we traditionally like to do uh, some polls just to get an idea of, of who's attending. Uh, what the makeup of the audience is, uh, and uh, where we're all at in the e-learning industry. So let me uh, go ahead and, and launch uh, a couple of polls here. Uh, so the first uh, poll is uh, how many uh, years of experience do you have uh, creating e-learning? So go ahead and, and click there, and we'll get an idea of, of where we're at with the, the attendees. We'll give that just a couple more seconds here. It looks like we're about uh, three quarters of everyone has uh, punched in an answer. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close that out. We're about done. And um, let me go ahead and share this poll. Uh, so you see that uh, you know there's a lot of people uh, I guess it's a diverse audience. <laughs> we have, uh, you know, some with no experience, others with many, and uh, there's there's quite a few there in that mid range. So that, that, I appreciate that. That gives us uh, an idea of uh, who's attending today. Um, let me go ahead and ask one more question. Um, this has to do because we're going to be talking about an online <clears throat> review tool. Uh, I'd like to get an idea of how big uh, your development team is. And so is it uh, you're a one-man show or one-woman show, uh, or do you have a, a very large team? Let's get an idea of, of who we're looking at here. OK, again, we're, we've got most everyone voting right now. So I'm going to go ahead and, and close this poll and then share it. So it looks like uh, you know a good 40% uh, of the attendees today are in a team of two to five individuals. Uh, almost 20% are, are single uh, developer shops, uh, but then we do have a few on the top end, uh, 20 plus, and then uh, you know about 20% each of the the larger teams. So very good. Appreciate uh, you uh, responding to those and and uh, sharing uh, what your situation is. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at what we're going to be covering today. So today, uh, what we'll talk about, what well, you'll learn, uh, first are the top five problems associated with QA testing in the e-learning course. Uh, now, there are certain problems that are shared uh, with all software testing, uh, but we're going to be specific to uh, e-learning courses and how that's a little bit different than, than standard software testing. Uh, we'll also talk, in, talk about uh, the Agile, or uh, as we call it, the microcycle testing methodology, and how that solves uh, these five problems, or the top five problems, associated with the e-learning QA. Uh, next, uh, we'll talk about uh, how to implement a microcycle, microcycle testing uh, program, and really get as much as 75% time savings. Now, that seems like a big number. Uh, and and it is, and uh, we have really found uh, ourselves and working with our clients that this 75% uh, time sa savings can be realized. So that is a real number. So first, let's define uh, what is uh, course review and quality assurance testing in e-learning. So we're all on the same page, talking about the same thing. So really. You know, QA testing and e-learning course really involves uh, content reviews with SMEs, the subject matter experts, and other stakeholders uh, that want to make sure that the course is accurate, that there's not anything that uh, doesn't hit the mark within the course. 
Also, you're, uh, it involves navigation testing, making sure the, the back and next buttons work, uh, the, the links and the, the glossary, uh, table of contents, etc. Also, if you're linking out to uh, another page or an external website, that those things uh, work as well. Uh, next, you're going to be uh, testing for performance on varying operating systems and web browsers. Now, this has gotten a lot better uh, as time goes by, but uh, still needs to be done. There still is, is a certain variance and, and differences with depending on uh, the browser that the learner might be using and, and, the, and certainly the OS that they're on. And then we have um, asset playback, ensuring that uh, your, your video, audio, uh, animations, you know, all of your media is playing appropriately. And then finally, uh, data communication. Uh, most uh, of our clients, most of you probably uh, launch uh, your course through a learning management system. You want to make sure that that data communication, whether it be through SCORM or otherwise, is happening and working so that the, uh, the progress, the bookmarking, and any scores, of course, uh, will be uh, noted in, in the LMS. So this is basically what uh, QA testing and e-learning course centers around. Now let's talk about the top five problems uh, associated with testing an e-learning course. So uh, I'm sure you, as, you, as you go through this list, you're going to recognize, and you've been there, and <laughs> you've done that. These are very common, and uh, you know, through all of our clients, uh, we found that these are the top five. First, uh, we have um, designated testers don't review on schedule, or they don't review at all. Uh, this is a, you know, probably the, the most common item that we see. You know, you say you put up a course, uh, you make it available, you ask the review team to go in and test the course, and it doesn't happen. You have to send out reminders. Uh, you know, you have to chase them down to make sure that they get the testing done. That's a problem. It, it extends the time period out that you're reviewing uh, before the course can go live. Uh, next, the, the collection of feedback often breaks down. And so it's not a, a smooth process, uh, whether that's, uh, and that typically that's coming from the, the reviewers, uh, but it also can be coming back from the development team. And depending on what uh, technology or methodology you're using, uh, if it's not solid, you know, that communication often breaks down. Uh, number three, uh, this is also a huge issue, the feedback duplication wastes time. So you put a course out there, if you have a, a typo on page one, you know, typically, all of your reviewers are going to see that. Uh, they're going to take time uh, reporting it. Uh, you're going to take time uh, addressing the issue or going through and sorting through the, the feedback uh, and making sure it's all the same thing. And, um, and, and that just it really is, is a big time waster. Number four, uh, the lack of issue management process creates holes in quality. So if you don't have a defined process, uh, if you, w once you receive that feedback, uh, if you don't have that nailed down so that you can see the issue through to resolution, uh, maybe it'll, it'll get lost, it'll slip through the cracks, uh, oh yeah, that was reported, but gee, it never got fixed, uh, type of thing. And number five, audit trails are difficult to produce. So, uh, you know, again, you want to know what happened to each issue, whether it was addressed appropriately, and be able to go in and audit that, make sure that uh, each, you know, all of the feedback that comes back from the QA team, the testers, is addressed and addressed in a timely manner. And if you don't have the right system in place, uh, being able to get visibility on that, those types of things is very difficult. So these are the top five problems that we found uh, with testing an e-learning course. And so during this um, presentation, we'll talk about how you can potentially solve those problems. Uh, and we're advocating the microcycle, the, the agile uh, testing solution. Uh, basically, the microcycle solution uses web-based uh, issue tracking tools, and um, so that the feedback collection uh, doesn't break down. And uh, and then you know it employs microcycle methodology. So so the first thing that we'll well we'll talk about is the methodology, and then we'll go into a, a slide or a quick demonstration of the software tools. Now I'll be demonstrating the review tool from Rapid Intake, but there are also some other alternatives out there as well. But we want to make sure that it's uh, web-based uh, issue tracking. 
So um, the technology part of the solution. So why do you want to use web-based tra web tra uh, issue tracking tools? Uh, first, you get better feedback collection. Uh, everybody's working uh, in the same portal, and so you're not relying on you know, email or other, other sorts of uh, issue tracking or is issue reporting um, tools. Uh, it's, it's methodical. And uh, you know that this uh, systematic approach is going to be more successful for you. And uh, you know the third bullet point there is that you have improved audit trail and reporting. So you know you're not going to have to look through your inbox to see if uh, so and so reported this or when they reported it. Uh, it's all contained within this web-based tool, and so it's very easy to see uh, what is being reported and what's been done about it. And in talking about uh, you know the technology part of the solution, which is one of the major parts, um, you know here is, as we have in this graphic, if, you know if you're using email or, or spreadsheets, uh, you know it's great that you're implementing technology, but uh, you know the technology might not not be very uh, effective or reliable. Uh, so hopefully we don't have a lot of uh, VW fans here, but you know as you see in the graphic, you know this particular car which is not representative of all, of all bugs, uh, is, uh, is not very efficient or reliable. And, and so sometimes these uh, tools break down and uh, you know, the best laid plans uh, go off track. What we're advocating is uh, using a web-based e-learning specific uh, issue tracking tool. So there are a lot of uh, testing software tools out there for general software testing, but again, they're not uh, tailored to the specific needs of e-learning course QA. And so using the microcycle method involves uh, using, choosing and using an e-learning specific tool. And uh, you know, that's going to be much more reliable, much more efficient. And the tool that, that uh, we have uh, that we'll be showing you today, which is one of uh, your options, is the review, review tool. Uh, it's online, it's specific for e-learning course review, and it uh, takes advantage of this portal concept where everyone on the team logs into the same place, uh, everybody's looking at the course, doing testing, uh, and uh, addressing the issues that come. Uh, now the review tool uh, that we'll be looking at today uh, is uh, versatile enough that it allows for testing not only for uh, just courses created in the rapid intake authoring tool, but as you see at the bottom there under the, uh, the title, uh, it's collaborative, collaboratively review articulate, captivate, lectora, and proform courses. And so if you use any of those uh, rapid authoring tools and you have courses created in those tools, you can utilize uh, the rapid intake review tool. Now, if you're using rapid intake, uh, obviously it's going to work uh, very well, but uh, you're not tied to that. Additionally, if you have a course that's just a, a flash file, like a Swift file, uh, you can upload that and test that as well. So it's very flexible and will allow for you to test most courses uh, that you create. Now that we've talked a bit about uh, the software part of it, and we'll come back and, and uh, go through a, a demonstration of the software tool and how to implement uh, the microcycle testing. But first, uh, I want to talk about uh, the methodology involved in um, microcycle testing. So let's talk about what uh, typically we currently do. So let me put this uh, flow chart up here. and. Um, Hopefully you can see that. You can enlarge the, the screen if the, the, the uh, type is too small. Uh, but basically, this is what traditionally uh, we do when we're, when we're uh, QAing uh, an e-learning course. So the, as you see at the top, you know, there's this alpha phase where uh, over starting over on the left-hand side, uh, you finish the development of the e-learning course and you start QA. Uh, you'll post the uh, course online, whether it be in kind of a staging area in the LMS or, or maybe just uh, post it on your web server and give a link to the, the reviewers. You send uh, testers an email asking them to go in and test. Uh, okay, and typically this is a, you know, a, a fairly sizable group uh, of individuals that you've uh, asked to test the course uh, in those areas that we, we previously uh, spoke about. Uh, functionality, content, na navigation, uh, things like that. And so tip 
this is is you gather this this group together. Uh, you wait a week or two uh, for testing to be done. Uh, you make sure that everybody gets in. You kind of chase the folks down and make sure they go in and take a look at the course. Uh, and then you collect the data in uh, email or spreadsheets. Once that data is collected, the feedback is collected, uh, you consolidate uh, the, the duplicates. Uh, and this happens all the time. You'll see you know, most of the time if there is a common issue, everybody's going to report on it. And so you have to consolidate, make sure it's the same issue that everybody's reporting. And again, uh, you know, the first phase takes a week or two. The second phase also uh, takes a week or two. Because during that time, you're not only consolidating and organizing the feedback, but you're uh, working on bug fixes and resolving the issues. So right now, we're, uh, you know, we're already at about uh, four weeks. Then, uh, going down the chart here, uh, you go down to the beta testing phase. So it's gone through alpha testing. Uh, you've collected the feedback. You've addressed the issues. And now you're going into beta. So you, t you post the new version, the beta version, online. You go through that same process. You send an email to the, the testers saying, hey, this course is now in beta. We've addressed some issues. Uh, let's have another look at it. Same process. You wait a week or two for testing and collect uh, the email or spreadsheets. Next, you go into consolidate and resolve and fix the bugs. And then you repeat until ready for deployment. So th this, you know, outlining this process, we're, we're at least at four weeks and, and possibly more. Now, I know that uh, you know, using this uh, methodology, you know, some clients, if, if it's a very simple course, see quicker times. Some see very much uh, the opposite, longer times uh, going through this QA process. And so once this is done, then the final step, obviously, is to deploy the, cur the course to the learners. It's ready to go. It's been thoroughly vetted, and you're ready to get out in front of people. So you know, it, it's a fairly straightforward but uh, slightly time-consuming process. Now, what we're advocating is a different approach. So let me go to the next uh, chart, and we'll talk about uh, the microcycle methodology. So first, um, before you even finish a development, schedule the testers. So they know ahead of time, hey, this course is about ready to begin, or about, excuse me, the review process or the QA process is about ready to begin for this course. And we want you to come in and test the course this date and this time. And you don't send it out to a whole group. This is an individual. And so uh, once development is create, uh, completed, you start the QA. You post the alpha version um, in a web-based issue tracking system. So rather than just sticking it out there in the LMS or on the website, uh, you start using the tool. You start using the technology. So you post it in the um, issue tracking system, uh, communicate the login information to the reviewer uh, and the tester, and uh, then testing. Uh, we recommend that, that there is a meeting between the project manager and the uh, first scheduled tester to make sure that expectations are uh, are talked about uh, and uh, you know, any details expressed, and so that testing session is going to be as effective as possible. Then you turn the uh, tester loose uh, in the issue tracking system, have them look at the course, and start giving the feedback. Uh, once that happens, the project manager can immediately and should immediately uh, log and or view and route the incoming bugs, and so you know they can see what's happening in real time, and, and what issues are coming in, and they can route those to the appropriate person on the development team to take care of. Now it might be that if it's just a one-man person, that uh, one-man show, that that they are uh, addressing those issues themselves. If it's a team environment, then they can assign those to two specific development team members. Uh, then the team immediately starts fixing the bugs. There's no need to wait. As soon as the, it's reported, it's routed, and it's uh, addressed. So that really shortens that whole cycle dramatically. Uh, you're dealing with one individual. Uh, they have a clear idea of what they're supposed to do. Uh, we're, you're working in the same uh, system, and so the, the issues as they come in can be addressed. Now, once that first phase happens, then you go down to the second microcycle, and you, the changes have been made. And so this would be kind of the beta phase where the next tester comes in and sees this cleaned up course. Uh, a, a meeting is scheduled and had with the second tester. 
so expectations are uh, expressed. And then the same process happens, where the individual tester logs the issues uh, that, that weren't seen initially, uh, the project manager sees and immediately routes those, and the team starts fixing them. And this uh, is repeated two to three times. So by the end of this uh, cycle, uh, you've got a course that has been you know, thoroughly QA'd. And again, if you're repeating this two or three times and using individual testers, you can really narrow down who those individuals are and pick your best ones and uh, make sure that uh, you know, all the issues are addressed and, and fixed, and then you can deploy that uh, training course to your learners. So it seems very simple and straightforward, and it is. And, and it really is a matter of leveraging the technology and then using this uh, microcycle uh, methodology as well. So uh, you know, we've, we've experienced this on our own team. You know, we, uh, we've had, uh, years ago, testing nights where everybody <clears throat> gets together and uh, you know, five o'clock work ends, and we start testing the course. And you know, we we found that exact same thing was happening. That uh, you know, a lot of issue du duplication. Uh, you know, we did you know, kind of capture everybody, so we had a cap captive audience, so we weren't waiting as long for the feedback to come in. Uh, but uh, it really took us a long time, and so we kind of had a modified version of, of this. And then we uh, you know came upon this idea of microcycle, and uh, it's become much more effective. And, and really, the results speak for themselves. So in talking about uh, the microcycle uh, testing method, the main principles here are conduct a complete testing cycle in one day. So schedule out that learner, make sure that they know well ahead of time that this is the expectation that we want you to spend a day or however many hours are required in that day uh, to go through the course and report the issues. Uh, and then and all conversely let the development team know that these issues are going to be coming in and they need to be addressed immediately. Schedule only one tester per day and so you're not uh, dealing with the team looking at the same issues. And then of course immediately fix as many issues as you can so that they don't linger. Now there might be some that require a little bit more remediation and work to, to take care of but uh, you know most can be fixed fairly quickly. So let's go uh, through a typical microcycle testing scenario. So uh, several weeks, uh, if you can, uh, before testing begins, the project manager uh, contacts the testers, and um, especially the, the, the first one, identifies who, who the first one will be, and schedules a specific appointment to help them get the testing started. And so by scheduling a personal meeting, uh, rather than, hey, test this course, and we need it done by this date, hey, I'd like to meet with you to talk about the testing, you know, on Friday at 11 o'clock a.m., uh, let's, you know, spend some time uh, talking about the testing. They're going to be much more likely uh, to follow through. So the first day uh, of testing, so let's say it starts at 9 a.m., uh, the project manager and tester are involved. Uh, the project manager explains the process how to log into the web-based issue tracking tool, uh, make sure the, the tester knows how to navigate through the course and report issues. Uh, and again, uh, most of these uh, issue tracking tools are fairly intuitive, and so this uh, conversation shouldn't take long. But it needs to be had just to make sure that there's no confusion uh, and that your, your tester is ready to go. And again, facilitating this, this getting started process really increases the chances that you're going to have a successful testing session. So after that initial conversation begins, <clears throat> uh, the members of the team log in. Uh, we, we, they see what issues have been reported uh, by the tester in real time. Uh, the project manager will typically assign issues to team members. Uh, we do, in the rapid intake tool, the reviewer, the tester, can also assign these issues. Uh, so it's really just your preference. But typically, it's the project manager will uh, take the role of assigning uh, issues to team members to be addressed. And then team members can, can start fixing uh, immediately. And they should uh, fix what they can uh, by the end of the day. And so as these issues start rolling in, they hop right on it. They address it. They fix it so that they're ready for the next uh, microcycle. Uh, this is going to reduce the duplicate issues, right? Because you've got one tester uh, going through the issues, finding things, and they're being addressed immediately. And so that the next person logging in is not going to see those same issues because they've already been fixed. 
Uh, and then this frees up the focus for subsequent testers. If you've got uh, you know, all of the basic stuff taken care of, you might instruct them to go in depth a little bit more or look for certain things. So uh, by the end of the day, or at the end of the day, uh, the project manager needs to ensure that the latest version of the course is available for the next tester. So the uh, items that have been submitted by the, the uh, initial tester have been addressed and fixed uh, to you know, what extent you can. And then that clean version or cleaner version is available for tester number two. Tester number two in, in that uh, case is not going to see the same issues and can look for you know, some of those harder to find uh, more subtle issues or, or problems. And so just by uh, eliminating that duplicate issue, you're really going to save a lot of time. So day two uh, starts over again. The project manager meets with tester two and repeats the same cycle. Now we do uh, have this uh, in a grid here. And so uh, you can see, and again, this, this uh, will be available for you for reference, uh, but it's a fairly simple and straightforward process uh, that just repeats and is narrowed down and confined to one single day. So uh, rather than having kind of a, a goal of let's wrap up the testing by this date and please go in before this date and do the testing, you know, that's going to encourage everyone to go in the, the, the final day or, or not at all. But if you're scheduling it and, and if you're identifying uh, specific testers, then you're going to have a lot more success. So that, uh, that is an outline of the, uh, the testing methodology. Uh, now, as far as the uh, technology side goes, uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, you really want to select the right issue tracking system. Uh, we recommend that it be web-based. I think that's critical. Uh, you know, rather than having something on the desktop of each tester, let's make sure that it's online so that all members of the team can immediately have access uh, to that QA process. Uh, it also should be designed specifically for testing e-learning courses. We, we talked about that a little earlier, that there's a lot of tools out there that can do similar things, but you really want a tool that has items such as an integrated course viewer and a system that automatically uh, captures where the problem occurs. And so by saying where, uh, we mean uh, what page it's on or what slide it's on, rather than, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's a typo in this course. Uh, no, there's a typo in this course, but it's on this particular page. And uh, a lot of the uh, issue tracking systems that you see today that are web-based will automatically stamp the page or the slide that the reviewer is on. Uh, so that uh, you know they don't have to do that manually. It's going to be taken care of uh, for them, uh, which eliminates uh, them forgetting to do that. Uh, the third item here, it's got to be easy to use. Uh, you know, as we were going through that methodology, you don't want to spend a lot of time explaining to a, a tester or a reviewer, you know, how to log into this tool and get started. Uh, in the example that we just saw, we allotted 30 minutes for that process. And so it really can't be too difficult, or sh and it shouldn't be. Uh, they should be able to get their credentials to log in and intuitively be able to go in and, and start testing that course. Uh, you also should have the ability to assign issues. So as you're working as a team, uh, each individual team member can be assigned specific items to follow up on. Uh, this, again, is going to be important to the process to make sure that the, those issues can be uh, addressed by the end of the day. Uh, it should be capable of hand, handling threaded discussions. So as an issue is addressed, the uh, development team member that uh, fixes the issue or, or uh, takes a hold of it can add their own updates. Let, let uh, the rest of the team and, and most importantly the project manager know that yes, I did look at this and I did fix it. Uh, it should be searchable. And so you know, if you're looking for specific items uh, relating to maybe a specific problem in the course, uh, you know, some, some text that you want to search on it, you should be able to uh, search through and find specific items. You might want to search through and find uh, issues that are uh, associated with a particular page or a slide, and so it should allow you that, that uh, capability. And finally, um, it, it's uh, really great if it can be integrated directly into an online e-learning authoring system. Uh, and so if you can go in and author and then immediately go into the, the review process, it saves you that 
uh, uploading time that where you get the uh, course that you've created in the tool into the uh, the testing and review. Now it's not essential, but it is uh, it is a nice thing to have and something you should look for. So uh, for this demonstration, uh, we're going to take a look at the review tool, which I previewed earlier. And uh, this is by Rapid Intake. Uh, you notice here with, with the icons, it does uh, support Flash and HTML5 courses. And so uh, if you're creating something for the desktop and or mobile devices, uh, you're going to be able to review and, and take a look at what's being created. All right, so at this point, let's go into um, the product demonstration. And again, uh, as I mentioned earlier at the beginning of this uh, demonstration, Andre, uh, who is an excellent e-learning developer, is online uh, monitoring uh, the question area. So if you have any questions, please feel free to, uh, to type those in, and, and he'll get to those uh, as soon as he can. All right, so let's take a look now at the Rapid Intake Review tool. So this is the, the login screen for review, uh, again, web-based. Uh, now, I'm going to assume that I'm a reviewer at this point. So I've met with the project manager. Uh, the project manager has explained to me how to log in and what to do uh, very briefly. And now I'm going to start my work. So as I log in uh, to this console, uh, I'm going to see uh, this course that I've been assigned to review. And in this case, the course title is How to Battle Cancer with a Vaccine. So this is a healthcare-related course, and I'm going to go in and review based on instructions given to me by my project manager. Uh, now, you'll notice that there are, this is an active course that's been already reviewed a number of times. And just to show you know, what, what you can see on this initial page, uh, there are a bunch of items that have already been uh, reported. And so, you know, in, in this scenario, I'm probably uh, reviewer number two or three or later. And so, as you see, according to this legend up top here, there are 16 issues that are in red that signify issues that are open that need to be addressed. Uh, there are 13 issues that have been set to verify status. So someone has been assigned to verify that this has been taken care of. Uh, typically, that's a project manager, but it can also be another development team member. Or it can even be a tester or a reviewer that can be asked to verify uh, whether the issue has been uh, taken care of. And then finally, we have 94 issues that have been closed out. And they're in green here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this course and go in and begin my testing. So when I click on the course, there are two buttons. I test the course and manage issues. And reviewers as well as development team members have access to both. Uh, typically, the reviewer is just going to go in to test the course. But if they're assigned something to verify, they can also see what has been submitted and what has been assigned to them personally. So I'm going to go in and click Test the Course. So really, all I've done is log in, click the course, click Test the Course, and now I am, well, let me enlarge this window, I am uh, looking at this course, and I can go through and review it page by page. And so let me just uh, go back to this first page here. And so I can go through the page, and I'm seeing it just as uh, the learner is going to see it. And so this is the Flash version of the course. And uh, th this particular course was created uh, using the Rapid Intake authoring system. So it's uh, dual output, both Flash and HTML5. And we'll look at the HTML5 version in just a moment. Uh, but basically, I can go through and look at it page by page, use the navigation, test all of the links. If I see something that I need to report, there's this button down at the bottom titled Add an Issue. And by clicking that, I get this uh, issue reporting area that comes up where I can type in my feedback. And so say on this page, you know, I click on this link here uh, to learn more about William Coley's life-saving experiment, and it's a broken link. So what I want to do is type, type in broken link as my issue title. I can type in you know, some sort of description of this issue. Oops. So you know, maybe I want uh, them to, to go to a, a different URL. And, uh, and so I, I can be as descriptive as I want here. If I, I type beyond the parameters of the box, it's going to scroll. And so you know, if I, I need to go into greater detail about this particular issue, it's going to allow me to do it. Then over on the right-hand side, uh, it's going to allow me 
to either assign this to a development team member, or it's going to allow me to leave this not assigned. And, and according to the microcycle uh, testing methodology, those assignments are typically made by the project manager. If it works better for you, if you have a smaller team and, and you want the reviewers to, to assign those issues, they can do that as well. Or you can just instru instruct them to leave this not assigned. Uh, next, the reviewer uh, or tester can note a priority and also a category. So if you're looking for specific uh, testing areas, you can instruct them to note a certain priority and a category. And you have complete control over what appears uh, in these menus. And so as you are using review, uh, you can go in and set your own uh, priorities and your own categories that your testers can choose from. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and assign this uh, to myself. So it's going to show up for me. So I'm going to assign this to DG Blakely. And I'm going to click Add Issue. And it's going to add the issue to the system. And then I click OK. I can close this window out. And then I can go on to the next page and, and so on and so forth. And as I mentioned before, it's going to note which page I was on when I uh, noted that issue. And uh, so I don't have to do that manually. Now, as we're going through this course and looking at the flash side, since this is a dual output course, it's also going to allow me to look at the course and see what it's going to look like on a mobile device. And so if you are doing mobile uh, course the development and delivery, or if you're looking to do that, uh, this is also important. So I'm going to go up here in the upper left-hand area. You'll notice that in the upper left-hand corner, there's desktop and flash that is selected right now. I can go over to this mobile section and then select 10-inch tablet, 7-inch tablet, and smartphone. So the, the rapid intake authoring tool kind of reformats those three different form factors. So if I click on 10-inch tablet, I'm going to get my iPad view. So it brings up a simulated iPad interface, and I can see what the course is going to look like uh, for my iPad learners. Now let me just rotate this on its side so we can see a little bit better. So here's the same course, uh, but in HTML5 and in the simulated iPad. And so it, it enables swiping, and so I can swipe uh, from page to page. But still, I have this add issue at the bottom. And so even on the, um, the mobile versions of the courses, I can note issues here as well. It also allows me to see what it's going to look like on a smaller 7-inch tablet and even a smartphone. If I want to see what this uh, course is going to look like when it's picked up on uh, an iPhone or an Android phone, uh, it's going to allow me to do that as well. Now, as a reviewer, I can also preview this on my own device. So you know, maybe I want to see how this course looks on my iPad that I'm using right now and make sure that it's uh, performing properly. So I can just click Preview on Own Device and uh, type in my email address here and click Send. And the review tool is going to send me a link that I can click on and access the course uh, via my iPad. And that's really all there is to it. You know, again, it's very intuitive. Let me go back to the smartphone view. It's very intuitive, easy to see. And uh, it's not going to require training or instruction. Uh, for that uh, tester. So it can easily be accomplished within that 30-minute slot uh, that we noted uh, when we talked about the methodology. So once the reviewer uh, finishes the reviewing the course, uh, they just need to close out of the window, and they're done. They can log out and uh, go on their merry way. Now, uh, where the issues are uh, reported and where they can be accessed by the project manager and subsequently the development team is under Manage Issues. So if I click uh, Manage Issues, uh, I can see uh, that this broken link issue that I just assigned to myself uh, is noted here. Now you'll notice that over on the right-hand side, right now I'm only looking at my issues, issues that have been assigned specifically to me. And so that's why I'm able to see that. If I wanted to see more issues, I can click on Open Issues. And so typically the project manager, uh, will they'll automate uh, uh, the issues if there's no assignment made. And so they'll be able to see this list either under My Issues or Open Issues. So if I click on Open Issues, you'll see that there's a lot of issues that are not assigned to me. And uh, the list gets a lot longer. Uh, you can also look at issues that have both the Open and Verify status. This is a status that can be set by the developers. And then finally, issues that have been closed out. So let's just uh, concentrate on this one issue that I noted here, the broken link issue. So when uh, I click on that, uh, it expands, and uh, typically there's more uh, text 
that uh, is inserted here. And so uh, if I've been assigned this issue on the development side, now I'm, I'm changing roles. Now I'm a developer. And I've been assigned this issue by my project manager. Um, I, I can uh, go in here, read the title, read the description. And then this, in this box on the right, there's some very specific information. So starting from the bottom, I, I can see the browser and the operating system that the reviewer uh, and the tester was using at the time that they noted this issue. Uh, the date that it was created on, uh, who it was assigned to, and who opened it. And then here's my priority and category and status. Now up at the top, there's something that's very important, this page. And uh, in the review tool, uh, it shows up, uh, if it's a rapid intake course, as a hot link. And so that immediately opens up the authoring side. And that's why it's convenient if, if the uh, issue track system and the authoring tool are uh, integrated. Uh, if not, it's going to sit, tell me what slide or what page it's on, so there's no confusion as to where this issue came from. And so I can go in and I can uh, address the issue. Now, I'm trying to get this done in the same day, so if I go in and I, I redirect and I fix that broken link, and then I can add my own uh, update here, fixed link. Uh, then, uh, typically what I want to do is assign this to the project manager. So say David Blakely is the project manager, and I want him to verify that this has been uh, taken care of. So I'll save that update. Uh, it disappears from my active list, because now it's under verify. And so here is my, my broken link issue. Uh, so as a project manager, I can open this up, and I can see that this is reported you know, by this person on this date. Uh, regarding this page, and that DG Blakely uh, on my team uh, added a, uh, a comment here that he fixed the link on 10-19-2012 at 11.43 a.m. And uh, so it's automatically going to give you me a date and timestamp of, of when this update occurred. Now, as a, a project manager, I can add my own update, and I could say something like, uh, you know, maybe that I whoops, verified fix. And then rather than assigning it to someone else, I can just switch this to closed status, uh, click Save Update. It disappears from the Open and Verify issues and goes in the, into the closed bucket. And I can move on to the next one. So as you can see, as we're working through this, uh, you, you know, it's a very uh, methodical process. And so, uh, you're, you're not going to worry about issues getting dropped or forgotten. Uh, the project manager can easily come in and uh, go through and see what's going on. Now, um, right here, you know, we have a lot of issues. Uh, we saw in that initial uh, indication when we logged in, there were a, a number of issues that were open, some that were needed to be verified, and a bunch that were closed out. And so here, as we're looking at open and verify issues, if you have a number of issues that are coming in and you want to organize them and go through them very systematically, uh, the review tool allows you to do that. In the upper right-hand corner, there's this view as a grid button. And so I'm going to click that. And then my issues come out uh, in, in a sortable format. And so maybe I wanted to go through, and I want to address all the issues on a specific page and make sure I get through all of those first. So I can sort by page. And I can see all of the issues uh, sorted by page. Maybe I wanted to go through and I want to sort by priority. And we go descending. And so I'm going to address all of my urgent issues first. Then I'm going to, go to, going to go to top, and then medium, and so on and so forth. And so depending on you know, how you want to address those issues, what works best for you in the particular course that you're, you're uh, testing, you're able to sort through them and uh, make sure that all of the address, not only are all the address issues addressed, but also that they're addressed in, in the right order, that you're getting the, the most important ones done first. So as you can see, it really becomes possible as you're using this system and as you're assigning issues out that are reported by the uh, reviewers that um, you can get this done in a day, depending on the complexity of the fixes. Uh, certainly, the, the issues can be communicated immediately to your team and uh, addressed in whatever order you want them to be. Uh, now, there's some other uh, items uh, just over here on the right I wanted to bring your attention to. Um, 
one, you can uh, select delete, select, uh, or excuse me, let me talk about the safe searches first. Uh, so if you have a, a certain search that you want to do that's very common, so maybe you're wanting to search for you know, a particular page or a, a particular item, uh, and you can create uh, custom searches, and then you can save those searches. And it, it allows you to customize a search based on status, priority, who submitted it, who it was assigned to, the category, et cetera. And then, of course, below that, you can delete uh, searches that you've saved as well. So very simple and straightforward. Um, I should also mention that this uh, is available uh, as a trial on uh, rapidintake.com. And so if you want to take a look at the review tool, uh, you can look at reviews specifically, or you can just uh, do a trial of our, the authoring tool, which it's included in, and uh, take advantage of, of um, you know, evaluating this uh, review tool. All right, very good. Well, let me uh, hop out of the tool now. And we'll continue on. Uh, so just to reiterate, uh, going through the process, the microcycle uh, methodology that we outlined, and using uh, a web-based issue tracking tool uh, that we just saw, you really can um, realize a 75% time savings, which for most folks is huge. It takes out a lot of headache. It allows you to meet your deadlines more effectively. And um, it really makes that interaction with the testing team a lot smoother, a lot better. Uh, traditional, you know, we see that on average that takes about four weeks. Microcycle, four days. So, you know, really night and day. So again, uh, just readdressing and re uh, going through again those top five problems with QA and how they're addressed uh, by microcycle. Uh, designated testers don't review on schedule or at all. The schedule testing addresses that. Make sure that you, you schedule that out with the, re the tester ahead of time and that you have that meeting and uh, you know, explain to them how the process is going to take place. Uh, second, feedback collection often breaks down. Right now, uh, if you're using uh, an online issue tracking system, you've got a managed online database. Everything is right there at your fingertips. Nothing is being reported or updated in an outside tool that could be lost. And so that, that collection of feedback uh, is not going to break down. The feedback duplication, which is huge, uh, there's not going to be any duplication because you're addressing and fixing the issues as they're tested. And so you're not having to circle back around and um, you know, try to figure out, that, make sure everybody's talking about the same thing because there's 50 different um, issues have been reported on the same thing. Uh, lack of issue management process creates holes in quality. This is a thorough process. And so you're not going to see any, anything missing, anything dropping through the crack. There's not going to be any holes in, if you're using this methodology. And then uh, finally, audit trails are difficult to produce. As you saw there, there's a searchable history. Uh, you can see uh, how each issue uh, goes from the, the time that it's reported to the time that it's fixed and verified. And so if you wanted to see you know, what happened specifically with this issue, well, I know that this tester uh, submitted it, uh, this developer fixed it, and it was verified on this date and this time. So uh, you know, very thorough, and you're really not gonna, it's really going to take the guesswork out. You're not going to have to wonder about what, what's happening to these different issues. So uh, that's uh, the... Uh, summary of the presentation. I uh, appreciate your attendance today. Uh, if you do have any questions uh, after uh, the, the webinar today, uh, I'd be happy to, to talk to you about those uh, items. Uh, I've got my direct line listed right here. Uh, I also have uh, my email uh, address listed on screen. And so if uh, anyone has any questions, feel free to uh, contact me directly. Also, uh, you know, as I mentioned, Andre is online answering questions, and so if your question hasn't been addressed yet or you'd like to submit uh, something else, we'll go ahead and leave that open for a few more minutes. We have just a, a few minutes before the top of the hour. Uh, we'll leave that open until uh, 2 o'clock Eastern and uh, address as many questions as we can. Again, this, this uh, recording uh, will be available uh, next week, and we'll send an email out to all participants. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, and, and have a great weekend.